Hello, welcome to the Hoop Collective podcast. We talk about the NBA, which we are doing on Thursday, early afternoon. Joining me from New York City, Tim Bontemp. What's up, guys? Joining me from Dallas, Texas. I think you're in Dallas, McMahon. Are you in Dallas, Ben McMahon? Yes, sir. Howdy, partners. So, McMahon, something very enjoyable to me happened this week. This has a chance Our to take a sick turn, but okay. <laughs> Our man, Timmy Goodtime. It involved Timmy Goodtime, so let your mind go back out of the gutter. The rare, uh, enjoyable experience with Timmy Goodtimes. Here we go. Uh, our man, Timmy Goodtimes, shifted the, the odds in Vegas uh, for the MVP with his latest straw poll that came out two days ago, uh, where Jokic, Nikola Jokic, passed Joel Embiid as the, uh, as the leader, I guess, in the clubhouse, or not in the clubhouse yet, but uh, Bontemps. Uh, Jokic went from second in all the sport books to favorite. And, and now he's, um, you know, you got to, it's a less than even money now. Once that, once your straw poll came out, I heard a thing or two about that. Uh, big man, you're going to have to start uh, bribing bond temps for the, uh, <laughs> the information before it I was going to say, I might, I might need to, uh, do some 401k consulting <laughs> before the straw polls come out. So, well, so Bontemps, um, the, it's been out for a couple of days. Usually we sort of, it comes out closer to these podcasts, but it's been out for a couple of days. You've um, had a chance to calm down. Uh-oh. I was fine. I was fine. <laughs> no, no, Wait, no. did Jokic end up on all the ballots this time? He did. He ended did up he on a, all 100 did, ballots. Did he get a, a fifth place vote from the Cornhusker State? He, he did not get a fifth place vote from the Cornhusker State. Though he did get three fifth place votes, so we'll get into, I assume. Yeah. All right. Well, will you go over real quick what the numbers look like and remind us if you off the top of your head, the first place vote spread. So what was it? Six weeks ago, you did the last one or so. Yeah. So the second straw poll was right before the all-star break in mid-February. The third one is now. So in that one, uh, six weeks ago, I got it pulled up right here. Joel Embiid had 45 first place votes and had 789 total points. Nicole Jokic had 43 first place votes and 754 total points. And he was not on five ballots. So if he'd been in second on five ballots, they'd have been exactly tied with 789 points. And this time around, essentially, the difference is Nicole Jokic got 16, 17 people to change their mind. They vote him first and Joel Embiid second. So the totals are Nicole Jokic had 62 first place votes, 860 total points. Joel Embiid had 29 first place votes, 719 total points. And Yas Tenekupo had nine first place votes, the same number he had last time, and 593 total points. And essentially, like I said, this really comes down to 15% of the electorate or so deciding that they thought Nicole Jokic was ahead of Joel Embiid now. And so while 62 to 29 seems like a big gap, I've tried to stress this a lot this week. I don't think this is like last year when this race was over. When Nikola Jokic had 90 first place votes in the final poll, and people argued for other players to win, did, and did you they think were not it was like November win? when it was over in, in, in Steph Curry's case, and a, a certain somebody was just beside themselves? Well, we'll we'll set that we'll set that part aside. Um, <laughs> I uh, but it certainly I think it's close enough with a couple weeks to go that. I think that there are things that can shift this race over the final couple of weeks, that it isn't a lock that Nikola Jokic is going to win. I think he's the favorite to win. I think there's a good chance <clears> to win, but I would say it's more like 65% chance that Nikola Jokic wins. And I think there's at least the possibility that this thing could shift in another direction, as opposed to last year when this thing was over uh, with a couple of weeks to go in the season. Yeah. I, th- I think the number one thing that could shift it to Embiid is if the Sixers win the East, um, they're two games back now, and the third candidate has a lot to do with that. Giannis had a, hey, uh, don't forget about me type of performance the night that the straw poll came out when he went, what, yep. like 40, 14, 40 and 14 and had the and had the game-saving block of Embiid at yes, the bucket. three blocks rejected uh, Embiid at the bucket. Um, so, I mean, I think it's hard. I, I know the numbers say it's a two-horse a two race, but... <laughs> 
Giannis still might have something to say about it, but the, I was one of the flip floppers. I had Embiid first last time, Jokic this time. And, and basically it, it came down to, for me, you look at the records, there's not a lot of difference. Um, you know, they're both 46 wins now. The, the Nuggets have a couple more losses. Aside from points per game, there is not a single statistical argument that falls in Embiid's in favor. I'm talking about traditional stats. I'm talking about analytics, analytics, including defensive analytics. Now you can talk about, well, those are a little wonky, whatever. Still, there's not a single statistical argument for Embiid over Jokic aside from just pure points per game. That to me was pretty convincing. God, he keeps playing well too. Um, Wednesday night, he had another great game. He was 15 and 19 from the field. And Denver is still, you know, upwardly mobile. Uh, you know, they're in fifth as we speak right now. Um, they passed Utah. We'll see. Utah and Denver are moving around, but you know, they are now within two games of Golden State for the four seed. I mean, uh, and Dallas, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Denver could get to the three seed. I don't know if that's going to happen. And as far as where Giannis is, I'm as far as where, um, well, Giannis, the Bucks are in the two right now. They very easily could get one. And Philly is in the three, and they very easily could be four or they could be one. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that, you know, a, a, a six month race is going to come down to whether a team finished first or two games back and finished third. But as you look at trying to evaluate that, so McMahon, Bontemps had to pester me to get him his, to get him his ballot because I considered long and hard. Um, putting he almost Jokic, flipped. He almost flipped. Putting you, you almost got Jokic first, up to fourth. <laughs> I mean, it's just so ridiculous that people keep talking about Jokic being overlooked. He, yeah. Obviously, he rating MVPs overlooked. can't be overlooked. I know, and it's like you know Michael Malone going on these various rants about how he's so, you know, completely overshadowed and all these things. I mean, and here he is. I mean, like last year, Bontemps basically declared Jokic was going to be the winner. He's stopping short of that. But even mm-hmm. no matter what happens, here he is. You know, repeating for MVP is harder than winning the first one in a lot of cases because you're competing against yourself. You know, I don't want to hear that anymore. You know, and again, I, don't, I shouldn't have to say this, but I voted for Jokic for MVP last year for crying out loud. If once you once you once you vote for a guy for MVP, what are you supposed to say? Well, you well, you're not allowed to. You know, so so, so you get you st- you stuck with Embiid though. I stuck with Embiid, but it was I thought about it for hours. And Bontemps was pestering me. Send your ballot. Send your ballot. We're waiting for your ballot. Well, we, I, just, for your I, just, ballot. I just knew he was ultimately going to put him at the top of the list anyway. So it didn't, also, so, so you had to wait for his ballot. You had to wait for him to show up for this podcast <laughs> when he was, you know, he's got to make his grand we're appearance. On, listen, as, late. as we know, in as Hoop Collective listeners know, we're always on Brian time, which is not exactly the time <laughs> the pod's supposed to start. So, it's it's know, windy it time whenever he decides to show up. <laughs> we had to move it like seven hours last week because well, Bontemps travel thing. The <laughs> other uh, record, the other. Other, uh, the other thing that hasn't been talked about, though, that needs to be brought up is, yes, the Nuggets are currently upwardly mobile in the po- in the standings. But I think the thing that could equally swing this the other way is if they do wind up in seventh, which they have a chance to finish in fourth and they have a chance to finish in seventh. I'm not saying they're going to, but if they if they do fall back over the next several games, I mean, now they're three up on seven. They're probably not going to do that. But I, and I'm going to say the two teams right beneath them, Utah is free falling. Now yes. they're going to, you know, tonight, last night for people listening, they'll get to see the LeBron AD list Lakers, which is a pretty good way to break a five game losing streak. Jinx. Just Jinx don't just, just don't get a 25 point lead because, you know, you guys struggle <laughs> to hold on to those. And then uh, the Timberwolves, after playing really well for an extended stretch, they, they've hit. Yeah, they've come back to a earth rough a bit. spot. So I, I, I think the Nuggets, I don't see them falling in, into the play. And I also don't see them. I don't know. The, the Warriors obviously are. are Struggling well, and, stuffless for the moment. Well, and the three people that had had Jokic fifth said that Denver being where they were in the standings, you know, they, at that point when I did the balloting about a week ago, Denver was basically either either in seven or they're tied with Minnesota for six. 
And since then, they've won a few games in a row. You mentioned these teams have dropped down. All of a sudden, they got a chance to get in the top four. I think if they end up, if they end up fourth or fifth in the standings with Jamal Murray out all year, with Michael Porter Jr. virtually out all year, with the way Jokic has played, I think Jokic will probably win. But and da- Dallas people might get mad at me for saying this, but I just cannot imagine the mental gymnastics of having anybody but Jokic and Bead, Giannis in whatever whatever order is the top three. Like those guys yeah. to me, it's, there a, are, it's a clear there cut. Are a lot of, I mean, there they, are a they, lot of people who are calling for Luca here, but the first and, two and, months and, of the season yes. matter. Right. Yeah. 2022 Tatum. has a case 20, but it's the 2021, 22 season. That's right. Same with Jason Tatum too. Yep. I mean, those, those guys both, I, I think, so a couple other things on the ballot that I thought were interesting since we're talking about these guys, um, 291 or 200, I think it was 291 of the 300 votes for first, second, and third went to Giannis and beat and Jokic. That was the mm-hmm. most of any I've ever had in the 10 polls I've done for the top three guys. They very clearly to your point, McMahon are ahead of everybody else. And then there were 10 guys that got votes for the final two spots and nobody got more than was on more than 45 ballots, which shows how many candidates there are to kind of fill in the back couple spots too. Um, John Morant finished fourth. I suspect John's going to get hardly any votes in the final poll yeah. that's done or in the final actual balloting because he's only going to end up having played about 55 games. And they're and, only going to lose two without him. It seems right. And it's funny. <laughs> if you look crazy. at their, if you look at the games they've played, there was a tweet by Stat Muse the other day yeah. uh, that um, sort of laid out the uh, um, the various games they played. A lot of them have been against bad teams, against good teams with guys out. So it it's not quite as it's not quite as yeah. stunning a record as it looks when you just see eighteen and two without John Morant. Yeah, but nineteen still, and two now after nineteen the Spurs and two now the buzzer went out. That's right. But still, he's going to have missed a third of the season. And yeah. when you've got Luca and Jason Tatum, and I think the guy who's going to finish fourth, my prediction is, is De- and Devin Booker, who has sort of mm. consolidated the Suns vote after Chris Paul missed six weeks and the Suns just kept rolling. My guess is those three guys are going to end up with the vast majority of those final two spots with the way they've played. And a lot of the other people that, you know, there'll be smattering of votes for other guys. But my guess is those six guys, the top mm. three, Booker, Tatum, Doncic, in some order, my prediction is that'll be the top five or six on the ballot. I mean, Tate, Tatum's Tatum won Player of the Week three of the four weeks in yeah, March. Yeah, he's been I mean, he's been awesome. They've obviously been great. Yeah, you know, Luke has we'll been incredible. In a yeah. So when I was when I was thinking about it, I was just thinking to my, I was you know, Embiid's performances recently have been excellent, excellent. Mm-hmm. He's putting up a great game after great game, even though the 76ers have been, you know, struggling a little bit. Um, they have, I think they're five and five in their last 10. Something well, like that. I, I do, I do real quick. I do want to point this out because I don't think Embiid, to your point has done anything wrong over the past exactly. six weeks. Exactly. But if you think about Philly since the all-star break, right? What do you think about? You think about James Harden, right? That's been all the talk is how does James Harden look? Generally it's been middling at best from compared to what you expect him to be. Obviously, he played great the other night against Milwaukee, but he hasn't been the guy that they hoped he would be overall. And the other thing you think about is them losing big games, right? Including got- to the Nuggets and to the Bucks. Not that Embiid, I right. mean, Embiid did his job in both games, but and the Suns. so did Jokic. They won. Well, so and they, did uh, Giannis. Right. They, they won. Right. And and even at the end of those games, Giannis had the block at the end of the game. Jokic hit the game when he shot at the end of the mm-hmm. Denver game. Right. There isn't a. There isn't a signature Joel Embiid moment to point to. And the other thing you didn't mention, Tim, was probably the most hyped game of the season was three weeks ago today mm-hmm. when the Sixers played the Nets and the Sixers got boat raced at home by the Nets. Yeah. So you put the way Jokic has played combined with all of that stuff, like not Embiid didn't do anything wrong in any of those games, really. He played great all the way through. But when the race is this close, little things like that, could end up tipping it the other way ultimately. So Denver's been winning games, but the, my my thing was, how can I? What is what is Embiid done to lose his position that I've had him in for for months? I just I couldn't find it. But I mean, I got to tell you, when you look at Jokic's numbers in March, Jokic's having one of the best. He's already having one of the most efficient 
seasons in NBA history. I think mm-hmm. he's sniffing around leading all time PER. His month of March, which is I, you know, pretty much complete now. He's averaging 30 points. Embiid's averaging, you know, 30.1. And he's right there to lead the league in scoring. By the way, LeBron James needs to play three more games at some point here to qualify for the scoring title. And he needs uh, to actually score points in, him in those games to hold on to the right, scoring title. Right. It, that's, <laughs> it's, you know, I know that's uh, secondary to the Lakers, but just FYI. He's Is averaging secondary 30 to points, LeBron? 30, uh, 30, 30 points, 13 rebounds, and eight assists uh, this month for Jokic. And this is the big one, guys. He's shooting 63% from the field. Um, who did they beat on Wednesday night? They beat Indiana. Uh, Indiana. I mean, the, 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 the uh, what are they? The Fire Ants, the Rock. Who, what's their G League team called? <laughs> the Mad Some, Ants. Mad Ants. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, he went 15 and 19 in that game. They got up by 30. Um, his usage rate this month is uh, pretty much the highest of his career. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Supercuts. Let's face it, life is busy. Between work and family and more work, our to-do lists have a way of getting longer instead of shorter. Luckily, Supercuts is here to make at least the haircut part of your life easy. Supercuts is perfect for people who need a haircut but don't have a ton of time for a haircut. No more scouring the web for salons with availability. You can use the Supercuts app to find the location nearest to you and check in or just walk in. Another bonus, the salon shows estimated wait times, so you know exactly what you're in for. That way, you're only in salon when you need to be. You don't expect to stay a while. As for the cut itself, it's always super solid. Thanks to Supercut's highly trained stylists. Get in, get out, and get to that thing that you needed a haircut for. Whether you've got a big presentation coming up or a wedding, or you just need some upkeep, Supercut's makes getting a haircut effortless. It's not just any haircut. It's Supercuts. Check in now on the Supercuts app or on supercuts.com. So, you know, Embiid's playing great. Uh, just Jokic is having this kick here, and it's it convinced enough voters. And that's the thing. It's This is not like the Heisman vote, where there's like 1,500 voters. There's only 100 voters here. So you convince... 17% of the field, which is what yeah. he did, you know. And so what Bontemps point is here is that something could happen in this last 10 days that could convince 17% of the voters and the ballots <laughs> just went out. I and got it's also, a, yesterday. And it's also the, the other thing to point out is I don't have, it's not like I'm asking the exact same hundred people, right? So who's, who ends up actually voting for the award? If this is close enough where it's going to matter. Well, like these three the, guys are right. all the close ballots, enough that it's, I got my ballot yesterday. Okay. So we didn't even know the voters until now. Right. The field changes every year. The reason that your poll is so valuable is because you do ask a hundred people who are likely voters. You know, you're not asking well, 99. He asked me, they won't give me a vote, but you're a, you know, you're a likely voter. I'm, a, I'm approximating the, what the voting pool looks like. And, that's yes, that's what I'm you, doing. You ask people in all the markets, right? Let, and it's, it's all people who cover the league, and it's all it's it roughly approximates the way the formula the NBA uses. That's right, why. But it's you're not successful. going into the press room at the Nets Bucks game tonight and just asking ten people in there. That's right. That's the reason why. And by the way, Vegas recognizes that this poll is meaningful, which is why the the odds swung when it published. Um, well, the last three years, so, it's basically nailed the first place votes each of each of the years and the winner. So yeah, let, let's not, let's okay. not underestimate the impact of the uh, Daryl Morey DM slash email campaign that's that's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually haven't heard. You know, back when Hart when he was, I remember one time I was doing a radio interview, and I, and Daryl was following. It was the year that Harden was going <laughs> up against Westbrook. Yeah, and um, I was in New York, and I was actually in studio. And I did this radio interview talking about the MVP race and I went to the bathroom and I'm in the bathroom and the producer sticks his head in and he goes, Brian. And I go, yeah, he goes, Daryl Morey is our next guest. And he wants to debate you on the MVP. He just heard you while he was waiting to come on. I was like, okay. You know, when he came on and, you know, gave his, his, uh, his pitch for Harden for, you know, 12 minutes, but we haven't, 
gotten that yet. You're right. Uh, well, we no, he's been R- pitching. Russell, he's been pitching for uh, Embiid for first team and for MVP and stuff a little bit. Russell it Westbrook start, was, the, uh, was the least deserving MVP in NBA history right until Daryl gave up. He was uh, on the Chris team. Paul yeah. and a pack of picks to to get him, right. and then it was uh, the first team to have two recent MVPs. <laughs> <laughs> Rockets acquire MVP. Russell Westbrook was right in yes. the, uh, the headline. So. I don't know what I'm going to do with my vote. Uh, I'm not like sitting there forensically watching each, each player. Jokic is extremely deserving. I have, I have no, I, he's, he's absolutely defended his MVP. Look at him trying to be allowed inside the Colorado border again. (laughs) I don't trust me. (laughs) I got people. Other people got enough beef with me that, you know, if they're looking for beef with me, it won't take the MVP vote. And again, I think I'm contractually obligated. I didn't have a problem with Jokic winning it. I had a problem with Embiid being disqualified because he missed a couple of games. Um, uh, you know, so I, I don't know where, I don't know how it's going to go. But uh, Bontemps uh, poll, if you, I'm sorry, if you had, if you got John ja Moran at long odds, like Bontemps and I both know a couple of people who are heavy betters, and like uh, you know, they reach out to us and they're like, "Hey, I got Jaron Jackson." At uh, 140 to one to win uh, most uh, defensive player of the year. I mean, you th- you think he's got a good shot, right? And I'm like, no, no, I don't think he has a good shot. <laughs> There's a reason he's 141 odds. He's like, win. he's like, well, tell me who to hedge. I go, I wouldn't hedge that bet. That's going to be a loss. You're not going to win it. I, I was surprised um, Bond Temps restored today that Gobert is, is down the list in terms of defense player of the year favorites. Yeah, I the defensive player of the year race is all over the place. Like I wrote a story today about Marcus Smart and Mikael Bridges, and I talked to Rudy Ford too about whether guards yeah. can or should win defensive player of the year because 27 of the last 30 years, a center has won it. If you count Giannis Draymond and Kevin DeGarnett, who all played a ton of center. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm not sure who's going to win that award, but it, I think it's as wide open as it's ever been. So I, I am surprised at sort of where the prices are on that. Well, I'll tell you one thing, regardless of what Gobert has done this year, the Jazz fall from number one overall seed to right now, they're two games out of seventh. I realize yeah. they won't be in seventh. Right. That doesn't help. It's going to be hard for him to win. Well, well, and they're, they're, and they're, their defensive rating being middle of the pack doesn't help. And what helps Gobert is the on-off where it's, oh, they're still a number one defense when he's on the floor and completely yeah, they, fall apart without him. But yeah, the impact well, metrics with Gobert to uh, the Clippers on national TV is probably not the uh, most beneficial thing. Yeah. To award I have day. to say, Paul George not playing. I don't know what he'll do tonight. Paul George not playing for 43 games and then coming back and putting up 34. <laughs> that was damn impressive. I still yeah, and, am not and dominating you know, the, the, the second half, dominating the fourth quarter, man, in particular. And look, the Clippers. You know, there's been a couple of people who've said to me in the league the last couple of days, don't want to see Kawhi come back in the next couple yeah. of weeks. Well, listen, all these yeah. other teams they in end the West. Up, if they end up with the eighth seed, they're playing that beast in Phoenix and it will not matter. Yeah, but if they that, end up winning the seventh seed, they're playing a Grizzlies group we all I mean, really like, but has never won a playoff series together. I mean, 19 and two now without Ja. So we'll see, we'll see, man. Kawhi um, comes back. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. We'll they're, see. They're, That's they're a, playing that. That my guess uh, is he's not gonna, dynasty is Dylan Brooks refers well, to it. So uh, Mark Spears from Manscaped just had an interview with Ty Lu the other day, and he didn't rule it out. He's like, I'm not ruling it out, but I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, with the safe return of live events, you can actually be there to catch all the action in person with vivid seats. That's right. Every alley-oop slam, every one-timer, every sideline grab can be experienced live. And with Vivid Seats Rewards, you can earn rewards like free tickets. All you have to do is collect stamps, redeem, and repeat. It's that easy. From upper level to court side, Vivid Seats has you covered for all the events that matter to you. So grab your tickets today and cheer on your favorite team from the stands. Visit vividseats.com to download the app today. Vivid Seats. Life happens live. Talked about Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, you have a piece uh, out about today about the Defensive Player of the Year race. Bon Temps, Marcus Smart really, really, really wants to win it. <laughs> For a guy who is, um, you know, sort of not about stats, sort of about, you know, the craft, uh, that guy, I, I will, you know, it's crazy, McMahon. 
when it comes to defensive player of the year, these guys get in their feelings about oh, this award. Yes. Because this these are guys really like, important to them. And 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 Gobert's the same way. Draymond's the same way, which is why he takes shots at Gobert every every time he gets a chance. These guys who remember Tony Allen, he was like, You better first team. Yeah, first he's team. he's screaming first team. You know, he's on the floor after getting a stop screaming first team. Uh, but these guys who I call them dominant dirty work players, they do all the dirty work and they're they're happy to do it and they want full credit. For it, that's just you know that's the way it is. So, Bontemps, can you elaborate Marcus's interest in speaking about this topic for this story? That you oh did? yeah, I mean, look, anybody who's known Marcus at all, uh, Dallas native, uh, Marcus Smart, like other Dallas I, natives, I, I, not I, afraid. I, graduated not afraid from uh, graduated from Marcus High School in Flower Mound, which is the one that I went to for twelve weeks before that's, an expulsion meeting was scheduled. That's, well, that's why that's why I brought weeks. it up. I banned. Set, I set you up, buddy. Banned. <laughs> his name, his nickname, goes back a long time. Uh, but no, but Marcus, to your point, Brian, for years has campaigned for this award and um, thinks he should win it. And so when I went to the Celtics and said, "Hey, I'm writing a story about Mikael Bridges. I'd also like to write it about Marcus about whether perimeter players can win this award." Uh, the PR guy, Christian Magdola, just started laughing and said, I'm pretty confident Mark is going to want to talk about that. And then the day <laughs> I came there to talk to him for practice, I got there early, just to make sure. Which is why got- our podcast was delayed by hours. Mm. Man, was because so, so we could talk to Marcus Smart. And, Listen, he's an entertaining dude to talk to. So I'll and give, I'll give I got Bontemps there. Pass. I got there extra early, just like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I'm here. And Christian comes up and says, oh, Marcus is ready. And he was out of, <laughs> didn't practice. He was in his robe. He was hanging out. Was, it was, it was he a, was sitting was at a, the table with his hands folded on the table. He was, uh, he was uh, lounging in a chair. He was lounging in a, in a chair in the office, just hanging out. He was, and, and then the second I walked in, he hopped up. He's like, ready to go. Like, I mean, given the subject matter, I'm a little disappointed he didn't bring you lunch or something. No, uh, he, listen, he, he, and he talked and he, we talked for 15, 20 minutes and every answer was long. And, and look, like it's, it's a sort of a fascinating topic. Like you look at the the history of the All NBA or the Defensive Player of the Year, which I hadn't really studied yeah. that closely. The first seven years the award was in existence, six guards won it. Sidney Moncrief won it twice, and Mark Eaton, center for the Jazz, won it the other time. And since then, basically only big guys have won it. Gary Payton won it once. Kawhi's won it a couple times, and Ron Artest won it once. Every other guy who's won it's been a center or played a ton of time at center. Well, and, I also think I think voters have have become more informed about defensive impact during that time. Like, let, let's right. be honest. It, when you're back in the '80s, like, first of all, there's no league pass. You know, you, you these yep. reporters really didn't see the other teams all that often, um, and so I think a lot of it was okay. So and so's leading in steals, or boy, he shut down the team that I cover star when I saw him, or. You know, that, that, that sort of a thing. But by and the way, now we can watch everybody and there's all these analytics that, you know, you can take them, leave them, whatever, but they do give you a, you know, a different level of information about impact. By the right. way, a few months ago, I did a story on most unbreakable NBA records. This didn't make the cut, but I seriously considered it. Mark Eaton. Oh, it's wild. Blocks, blocks per game. Yeah. Now they didn't have the they didn't I have it. it back. I sent you that one. I looked it up. It was unbelievable. They they didn't have the stat around you know Chamberlain probably I don't know but yeah Russell he, Chamberlain in eighty four eighty five he averaged five point six blocks a game. That's going to stand. Well, yeah, well <laughs> even a, a, a Keem's career record it's unbelievable, and it's a different game because uh-huh. back that then, one that one made my list. You know back then teams weren't shooting forty threes a game. You know, so much more was was in the paint or around the paint. You'll never see that again. Yeah, Kareem's right. uh, Hakeem's block blocks record is one of those that is not going to fall. Um, yeah, he, the numbers on that are crazy for what somebody would yeah. have to do to break it. So Dwight Howard is the active leader in block shots. He's won what three or four Defensive Player of the Year awards. So just think of all the block shots Dwight Howard has had. Mm-hmm. He's thirteen hundred. 1300 blocks behind Elijah Wan's record. Yeah, he didn't he didn't get any in the 5 minutes 16 seconds he played in the uh as it would a take, starter in the would Lakers take, lost to Dallas. It would yeah. take him 8 seasons more averaging 2 blocks a game to catch 
Hakeem, just hey, for people, the, just for Dikembe, people to think about that. Dikembe Mutombo, who is second all time, is closer to tenth, who was Tree Rollins, than he is to Elijah Wan at first. Yeah, it's it's um, crazy. But anyway, I don't want to take too much from that story, Montemps. But it was funny. You talked to Gobert for that story, and he's like, "No, no, 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 no. The big man is he's more responsible on defense. He's got to yeah. be the he's got to cover up for everybody." Blah blah blah. And then Marcus Smart's like, "What? No, 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 no." The perimeter player. I got to go out there and guard all these little yeah. guys. Go Bears. The big guys are standing back there just waiting for me to, to help them out. It's, it, it was, was a hilarious. it was a it was a fun story to do because all these guys and all these guys said were very complimentary of everybody else. Like, obviously, mm. we've seen some back and forth with Rudy involved that have not been very complimentary. Uh, that was not the case here. Like Marcus, like Rudy's a great player. Now, he also was not afraid to say, like, we've seen Rudy is not the most versatile guy defensively. He's incredible at what he does, <laughs> but I can guard every position on the court and that, and I play in the switching defense and I'm on the best defense of the league. Like it was just fun to see them kind of go back and forth yeah. and give their uh, different opinions on what matters and what's important when they're two awesome defensive players who play Rudy's obviously in really guy. different you ways. Should vote for, you, you should, you should have him second on your ballot. He's a great guy. <laughs> Honestly, know. what I think is going to happen is I think there will be several guys who get first place votes and I, I think Gobert will get the vast majority of second place votes and end up winning his his fourth, which would yeah, it could, it could, wouldn't it, it? There's I really don't have a good feel for it at all. Giannis will probably get some support, you know. Bridges and Smart I think will both get some support. Yeah, I I really have yeah, no idea who's going to win that. You award. also talked to Mikhail Bridges for this as well, and um, he is he is spectacular. He's just spectacular. Um, He's really good. He had my he had my favorite quote in the whole thing, which is basically he basically said, uh, everybody loves to celebrate all these guys scoring 40. Uh, you better give me some love when they don't. <laughs> which right. I appreciate. Right. He's like, listen, uh, the guy's same energy, essentially. Right. You know, the guy scored 42 last night. Tonight, he scored 21. You know, who is that? Did I have anything to do with that? Um, so speaking of the Celtics, uh, they got some some bad and good news this week with Robert Williams uh, tears his meniscus on Monday, has surgery on Wednesday and it's, they were able to remove part of it and they're hoping to have him back in the Woj said the second round. I, I mean, I hope that's true. I, you know, whatever I, I will say this. I'm happy that he has his $50 million extension in place. Um, if he's going to you know risk coming back from a knee injury like that. Um, but there's no doubt it's going to impact them. I mean, they've already, you know, the game that they played in Toronto the other night, they didn't have a lot of their players. I'll, I'll give them a pass on that, but they play the heat in a high, high stakes game. He beat them, you know? And so you can already tell that their defense isn't quite the same. So Bontemps, they're in a very interesting position here. Ah, that sound has to make you smile. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Synchronize your online and in-person sales. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting, conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. So go to shopify.com slash hoop, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash hoop right now. Shopify.com slash hoop. They were in the one seed a couple of days ago. Um, the one seed in the East, the one and two is not that, exciting right now because you have the nets lurking out there in seven or eight and if you're the one or two you realize that there is a 50 50 60 40 chance whatever that you're going to end up facing the nets in the first round which is a terrible hand right if you're in the three or four 
you are going to have an easy, you remove the, the threat of the Nets in the first round. And the teams that are back there, Chicago, Toronto, Cle- Cleveland has fallen back. I don't think it's going to be Cleveland. That's a better draw than, than the Nets. So, so if you're the Celtics, you're sitting there saying, well, look, we're not going to have the time, Lloyd, for the first round. Maybe it's not the worst thing in the world if we slip to three. So maybe we rest our guys, slip back to three, four, and then hopefully we have an easier first round series. And then the time Lord comes back in the second round, hopefully. And now when we play the big guns, we have our, our team again, but bond temps has a story Uh-oh. about the vaccine status of teams in the East relative to Toronto bond temps. You want to go over that one? Yeah. Uh, so in, to play in Toronto, as we know from the uh, never-ending Kyrie Irving saga all season, uh, since January 15th, you need to be vaccinated to be allowed to play in Toronto and therefore play against the Raptors. So uh, with the East standing so bunched up going into Tuesday, everybody was within a game of first place at the top of the conference among Miami, Milwaukee, Boston, and Philly. Uh, I asked all four teams a very simple question. I said, is your team fully vaccinated? All your players or all your players fully vaccinated. Two teams, Miami Heat and the Milwaukee Bucks, immediately said, yes, the teams are fully vaccinated. Two teams, the Boston Celtics, Philadelphia 76ers said, we're not going to comment on that. <laughs> so that's that's what we're reporting. So so, so earlier this that, week, take that as you will. Earlier this week, the Celtics played in Toronto. They had four players who played on Sunday who were inactive on Monday. One of them was Robert Williams who Bontemps reported is vaccinated, <coughs> was also having surgery. Another one, Jason Tatum. He has said he's vaccinated. Okay. Um, Jalen Brown and Al Horford were on the inactive list. The Celtics say no comment. I know that Celtics fans have pointed out that the last time they played in Toronto in November that those guys played. The rules have changed since November. Now, if you're not vaccinated, you can't get into the country. And then we have the Sixers. Sixers play in Toronto, I think, in about a week and a half. They play. It's a week from today. It's their final. It's their final regular season road game in Toronto. Their first game in Toronto was also in December before the rule change. And I know that the Celtics. Some Celtics players have kind of made quotes that if you want to listen to it a certain way. Sound like everything's a okay, but I would just be very careful and keep keep an eye on how there's what those quotes actually are. So, like, man, here we have a situation where the Celtics are like, "Hey, we're a little banged up. Maybe we slide back." But then they have that Toronto thing hanging out there. And look, mate, it's two weeks away. You could, if you were not vaccinated, you could get a shot today. Two weeks later, you're considered vaccinated. Maybe when the time comes, everything will be fine. It's about it's about three weeks from right now until when game three of the first round would be. So yeah, there's so- there's enough of a window where if if there are any players who aren't vaccinated now, there's a window where they could be in time. But they have to wait two weeks after they get, you know, assuming they get the one shot vaccine. It's two weeks after that before you're fully you're considered fully vaccinated. So that's a pretty tight window if that is the case for somebody to be ready to go for game three of the first round of the playoffs. And I just want to point out, this story was not done flippantly. Von Temps did this, his homework on his stories story. flippantly. Unlike you, unlike you, Brian, who does all right. sorts of things. Wow. Right. I, yeah. Like showing up late. <laughs> Bully Von <bomb> Temps, man. <laughs> McMahon. So, so the, so the Celtics who like, you know, were riding high. Everything's a okay. Five or six days ago, their situation has changed a little bit. Yeah, it's changed. And I don't know how to, you know, as far as trying to pick your seed and all that kind of stuff, that gets dicey. How important is, you know, potentially home court advantage in the later rounds to you? I think that that's a factor now. You know, I think it's, a, I think it's an awfully big factor in the East. I mean, these teams are all really good. I would be messing around too much. Right. Of course, if you, if you're running into the nets, you'll have it regardless, but I, I do think it's a factor. I think if you run into, you know, Giannis and the bucks, you'll certainly would want game seven on your home floor. Um, I tell you, it's a good thing for them that they made the trade for Daniel Tice. 
which obviously was a kind of below the radar trade. Schroeder didn't work out, dumped him, dumped freedom. And, uh, and, but you know, Tice is at least a guy who has been in that system. And look, he played 17 minutes last night at 15 points with six or six in the field. He was very good. Like yeah, he's, he, he's looked like a different guy since he got out of Houston and is excited to be playing basketball. back. Right. The Celtics he, he is a, at least a rotation caliber guy. Obviously you don't want to have to rely on him to play a ton of minutes in the playoffs, but well, look, he was playing, he was playing 35, 40 minutes in the bubble for them. He was good. Yeah. He can, like he could, he can a, help them survive a, a, the first yeah, round for sure. No question. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're really glad they made that deal. Um, but yeah, the, the, the time Lord thing is, is a shame and hopefully he can come back in the second round and, and look like himself because the Celtics for what three months were the best team in the East. Now they've been, they've been killing it. And the other thing I'll say too, like, I understand the nets are a terrifying team to play. Nobody wants to see Kevin Durant, but like, My thought on this has always been, if you're going to win the title, like you should be able to beat the Nets. And like, if you're that terrified of playing the Nets, then you're not a team that you should be considered as a championship level team anyway. Like back when I, when I covered the Nets in 2014, the year after they lost to the Bulls in the first round and everybody got fired and Jason Kidd came in and they made the trade and everything. The last day of the season, they never would admit it, but they tanked the last game to avoid playing the Bulls in the first round with Joakim Noah on one leg because they were terrified of playing them to play Toronto. And Derek Rose on the sideline. Right. And as a result, they played the Heat in the second round. And it was a pretty tough five-game series, and they ended up losing. And by the end of that series, Dwayne's knee was messed up. And then when the Pacers kind of limped their way to the conference finals, they went seven games because Dwayne was playing on one leg by then. And, like, if the Nets had just not been afraid of the Bulls, those whole playoffs might have been different. And like, to me, if you're these teams at the top of the East, like look at Milwaukee last year, everybody was saying at the end of the regular season last year, oh man, the Bucks lost the heat last year. You don't want to play them in the first round of the playoffs. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. And they, well, they were like, you know what? They had a meeting. They said, we're just going to play this out. We're going to get the three seed. We're going to be fine. They obviously demolished the heat. They go on, obviously had the all-time series that the Nets going to win. I'm not saying that they, somebody's going to sweep the Nets in the first round, obviously, but I just think that if you're if you're a championship caliber team, you're going to have to beat really good teams along the way. And all this, like, we got to duck this team or avoid this team. Like, I, I just think that ends up not working out. Well, I don't think it's, I don't think Giannis is a, I don't think Giannis is afraid of anybody that I can tell you. Well, no, they're, well, the Bucks are not. The Bucks are not concerned. And, and as explosive as the Nets are and, you know, KD obviously has a proven track record. Kyrie's hit a game seven finals winner, all that kind of stuff. It is an awful defensive team. Right. So if you can't beat a really bad defensive team, then you're not a championship team. Yeah. Now they're they're playing the Bucks tonight, and they let you know this is what always happens on this pod. I'll say something right now, and then it'll sound stupid when it comes out. The Nets have been a bottom seven defensive team for that the entire season. They played a game against the Pistons two days ago. The Pistons ranked twenty, and I know they've been better lately, but you not are good, what you're not a good offensive team. They rank twenty eighth in offense. Their leading scorer for the year is Jeremy Grant. He was out. So we have a team playing on the road, bottom three defense, uh, offensive team in the league, playing on the road in Brooklyn. They put up 123 points. So Brooklyn isn't isn't even showing any signs of getting any better. And so I think in a different year, like I've talked about some of the years that those um, Cavs team, Cavs teams in 2000, um, in 2000, mid 2010s. Yeah. You know, there were a couple of those Cavs teams were just sort of okay that they got through, especially the last team that, Le- that LeBron had. The East was pretty weak back then. And if that Nets team was playing this, you know, even as the eighth seed with that East, I'd be sitting here going, oh man, like absolutely, they got the best talent. But the Nets are going to potentially have to win 13 or 14 games in the East to get out. And that's a big ask with the defense in the bottom well, if they, if they have to win if they have to win 13 or 14 games that that they're going to have to win more games than anybody else that would be kind of hard <laughs> well they yeah. have to do the play in buddy oh to potentially yep, win the play never in. mind my fault S- yep. simple math it's so Jesus. rare that i get to you got get you got me on that like one that. you got me did, on you, that did one. you see how he was his smirk oh he was me. he was he got so me giddy. he had, he got he me he had that gotcha i did i did i got i got got 
I got, Listen, I got when, when you run out of fingers to count on Von Tim struggles. <laughs> That's right. I struggle. By the way, uh, this, this is a good, good time to, to drop in. I heard we have uh, I heard we have some uh, extra bells and whistles for the uh, the trivia question this Ooh, week. Hey. OK, let's do it. CarMax brings us the trivia on the lot and online. Now it's time extra bells and whistles. Do we have bells our, and whistles to add to our producer? To Jackson, our producer Jackson do. said we have extra bells and whistles for the uh, for oh. the for the uh, thing this okay. week. Okay. question. All right. So from, from, uh, from the great Stats Williams, Matt Williams at Stats and Info, most valuable guy in our department. Uh, Evan Fournier the other day uh, set the Knicks single season three-point record, passing John Starks, who set that record in 1995. Hard to believe mm-hmm. somebody has a three-point record that old. Uh who is the current longest standing uh, three point record holder for a team in the NBA? George McLeod with the Mavericks? Incorrect. Dang. Wow. I bet you that's I close. Mean, Wait, this, you is this is a single the... season. I know. I know he's had. Yeah, that. I mean, that's yes. a pretty long standing a, one. It's the same season as the John Starks one. 1994, Dale, 95. Dale Ellis. Another great name, but no. This is not in it to be. It's not a it's this is not like some secret unknown player. Reggie not Miller. a Hall of Famer, not re, not a Hall of Famer, not Reggie Miller. Hey, hmm. 1990, which, by the way, the Thunder did take the Sonics records, right? They don't they, they still have the Sonics records. Yeah, I they, they, but think although I, so. I was informed, I don't said there was no OKC jerseys retired. Uh, Nick Collison is up in the rafters. That's right. Uh, former Sonic Nick Nick Collison. Um, hmm, this is a good one. Uh, I'm thinking of like great three point shooters in the nineties. Uh, that was a big time score was a guard played for a few teams. Alex played in English. Dallas, not Alex English played in Dallas at one point. You set the record. Didn't get enough shots. No, it wasn't Legler. That's right in the same ballpark years wise, though. Jason Kidd, New Jersey Nets. Not, not Jason. No, it was it was in 1994, 95. It wasn't. Oh, did you did you just say that? I said it earlier. Yes. Uh, The record was set with the Lakers. Nick Van Exel. Nick Van Exel. I cheated. That's their with a 183. Wow, that is shocking. Yeah, that is a shockingly low total. I can't believe that there's never been any Laker who got more threes to go. Cause I mean, Van Exel, even then I, and I did cheat. I looked it up on basketball reference. Van Exel was seventh in the league that year in, in 95. Wow. Now, 183. Now there's guys who hit that by the all-star break with ease. Yep. Wow. That, okay. That's a good one. Would not have gotten that. That's, by the way, Williams comes through. speaking of uh, career three point shooters, um, Probably by the end of this season, the Lakers better hope so. LeBron is going to move into the top 10 in all time three point makes. He's uh, Dame Lillard and Paul Pierce are tied for what, ninth what, slash. What 10. categories will LeBron not be in the top 10? In? I'm just saying, like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm asking what literally other yeah. is, I guess, blocks. Is that the only one? I'll believe you know, he steals. Won't. I'll take a look. Um, but I mean, you know, you never, LeBron always says, ah, I, I'm not a, I'm not a point guard. Well, you led the league in assists one year. I'm not a scorer. Where you're going to be all-time leading scorer, you know, you would never say LeBron is a is a three-point you know shooter. But you hang around for 20 years and uh, make a lot of know. threes. Yeah, um, Jason Kidd made a ton of threes. He was never seen right. as a three-point shooter either. By the way, right. I just want to I just want credit for my George McLeod answer. He, he uh, hit 257 and 95, 96. I was only off by a year. That's a, that was a, that now? was a great that was a great guess. He no, was he's so a, confident in that. He answer, was an old, that, I mean, you talk about an old school gunner boy, McLeod. I don't, I don't one. think Stats Williams would have given us something that obscure. George you know, McLeod. I mean, you know, it hit close to home for me. LeBron is, ranks 11th all time in career steals. He will probably not get there this year. He needs. Um, so he'll be in the top 10 in steals. Yeah. Do, who do you think is, you know, the guy right in front of him is at 10th? We've already mentioned him on this podcast. Even with that hint, I don't think you could get it. This is amazing. Jason, I didn't know the guy that's uh, many steals. Kids way higher. Um, 
kids number number two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who? Yeah, I don't know. Hakeem, tenth oh, yeah. oh, all time right. in steals. Yeah. And by I mean, the way, is. this is another. He is one of the best defense players of all time. This is another unbreakable record. So you talk about Chris Paul. Chris Paul is one of the greatest steel guys of all time. He's played, I think this is his 17th season. He's fifth all time in steals. He could, he will probably pass Gary Payton um, into fourth before the end of this season. Next year, he'll probably pass Michael Jordan to top three. So we're talking about super elite, mm-hmm. you know, John Stockton's steals record. I mean, his, his assist record is untouchable. His steals record. Chris Paul is 800 steals behind him. So Chris Paul's in fifth. We'll get to third by next year. I don't know if he'll catch kid. He's 200 away. But he's Chris Paul's eight. playing till at least 2035. <laughs> he might it might need that long because I mean those those that vegan stuff, man, he's going to last forever. <laughs> Chris Paul is closer to the 20th guy on the list. Then he the is st- to the Stockton, Stockton. Stockton. The Stockton numbers are insane. <laughs> I mean, they're just completely, they're just completely insane. I, I seriously think Chris Paul is playing into his forties productively, and I was one of those who was prematurely thinking that uh, the end was near for him. You'd probably be, f- you'd be foolish to you'd be foolish to bet against him at this point with the well, way I he just say, continues to roll he, along. It's crazy. He may play into his forties. I'm not sure he's gonna have a better chance to make it to the uh, to make it to a title than this year. CSX Transportation is an industry leader on the move. The railroad company has immediate openings for freight train conductors. Join the CSX team and start your paid on the job training today, earning nearly twenty five dollars per hour with no degree required. If you're safety focused with a passion for great service, you've got what it takes to move your career forward at CSX. Apply at CSX.com slash careers. That's CSX.com slash careers. CSX is an equal opportunity employer. Oh, I agree with that. This team is so good. The Warriors are just banged up. By the way, Steph Curry is still not doing Mm -hmm. basketball activities. Now, Steve Kerr says, trending in the right direction. What am I to say different? Still not doing... (laughs) activities well got Gray two got, fragile. Got, got 16 weeks to 16 16 days to get ready for the playoffs yeah we'll see. um and the suns look so good you know there was a game on wednesday night jordan pool kind of ended up looking silly because he took a shot from half court well the the, the the team was down the warriors were down three and he had four seconds left took a shot from half court and made him look silly because he thought the Suns were going to foul him. Yeah, what else is he going to do? Take another dribble and have to take two free throws. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. You can't outsmart the Suns. No. You think you can outsmart the Suns. You can't outsmart them. You, you can't outsmart the Suns, and you cannot out-execute the Suns. Chris Paul is by far the best closer in the league. And like it, get, it gets down to crunch time. He's going to make all the right decisions, and he's going to hit either an elbow uh, pull up, or he's going to hit a, a a little floater. They're going to make defensive plays. Like they're uh, it's so f- by far the best clutch team in the league. It's not even funny. And you know they're going to be the only sixty win team in the league, and they're going to end up like 66, 67 if they want to. <laughs> there was a yeah. game the other day. Uh, he was he was he was a late game situation. He was playing a two man. I think it might have been against Philly. They were, he was playing a two-man game with Bismack Biombo, who's been on the team for about three months. Mm-hmm. And he and he and Biombo ran like two little circles around the opponent and threw four passes in about six seconds. And Biombo ends up getting a clean layup and, the, and he gets a light foul and gets an and one. And Biombo was so ex- he had so much fun and was so excited about how that play worked that he went over and chest bumped Chris Paul. He went over and ch- I've never seen a player who scored the basket, go chest bump the guy who gave him the assist because he was like, Bismack oh my Biombo God, was- should be Bismack Biombo should be doing everything he can for Chris Paul. Cause he's re- completely oh, revived his career. 100%. Holy. But like watching be driving like- him to the games, you should be getting him food. <laughs> he should be doing whatever he wants. 
Biombo was so excited that like that little play worked. I mean, and it was just sort of, you know, it's sort of just a pure moment. I mean, um, Chris's Chris's wizardry is unbelievable. And like you said, man, I mean, it, you t- you joked about it earlier, but it wasn't long ago when this guy was traded Oklahoma City and left for dead as an insane. NBA player. And for him to have this second act or whatever act it is in his career, yeah. what are you fourth, fourth or fifth act, act yeah. whatever it is to go to Phoenix. I mean, I've made the comparison a few times. I mean, these guys, they, they just really scream out the 2014 Spurs who came back from losing in the finals in heartbreaking fashion and just clobbered everybody all season, got back to the finals, played the team they played the year before and destroyed them and won the championship. And I, I don't know if they're going to destroy the box if they play them again, but like, like you said, you look at their statistical resume across the board and look, I've said the bucks are going to win the title all year. I'm it's guilty of it as anybody. You look at their statistical resume across the board. They are an all time great team. And, and, and despite dealing with injuries to all their key guys, right. I think all their guys have missed time or whatever, like yep. the guys have missed that, time. It's crazy. And, and they've won without all of them. And like, you know, Cam Johnson's a really nice player. He's missed the last, I think, 13 games. Yep. So, uh, so they were down Cam Johnson and Chris Paul. They just kept on uh, kept on rolling. And, you know, last night, Booker had one of his worst games of the of the season. He, he couldn't yep. buy a bucket. Yep. And, you know, they did. But they win. Like, once I know, it's close. I know no, yeah, I know no it's Steph over. Curry. I know no Steph Curry, but they win in San Francisco with Booker having a dog game and, and pool lighten it up. Yeah. Pool had 30. You know, and, they, could, and so they couldn't like hit a shot. They couldn't hit a shot all night and they won anyway. If it's within five in the last five minutes, the Suns are winning. Yeah. Period. The, yeah. And that, you know, it's funny, you know, Bontemps, you mentioned left for dead when he went to Oklahoma city, when Oklahoma city traded him, I mean, he had an all-star year there and then they traded him and got a first round pick for him. They were thrilled. They were like, yeah. I mean, it, and it wasn't because they thought he couldn't play. It was because they were rebuilding, but they were like, oh, but they man, got like, picks to take him and then they got a pick to, to give right. him up. Now but it's like, going to be they, the last pick, but still. I know. But the point is like, they were like, boy, we played this perfect they and, and they did. But like they, they were still excited that they got a first for him. Hey, this guy's going to be all NBA the next two years. I mean, last year and this year. Incredible. You know, uh, if right. you really want to go down a, a, a what if rabbit hole. What if the Rockets, when when Harden said, "Hey, you know what? We can get Russ. Either make this deal, or you're gonna have to trade me." What if they said, "Okay, we'll, we'll trade you." Kept Chris Paul, kept that that group, and and got a haul for for Harden. Well, I still am waiting for the maneuver of the Rockets that will make me um, put Raphael Stone in the Provisional GM Hall of Fame if they can trade John Wall for Russell Westbrook and get a pick back (laughs) and they would have traded Russell Westbrook and got a pick and then traded for him and got a pick in a three-year span maybe even less calendar wise that will be a move I want to see that I want to see that maneuver Um, all right thanks for listening to the Hoopla podcast thank you to McMahon thank you to Bontemps thanks to Jackson our producer we will talk to you next week adios amigos adios